Food and weight obsession can be exhausting. Losing weight, gaining weight, dieting, feeling like a failure because you missed a workout, binged, overate, or gained all the weight back. The cycle is endless and it can be maddening, but I'm here to say you can stop the mental madness. You can take back control of your food behaviors, but you have to face your fears, you have to ask for help, and make a change. I am Leslie M. Thornton, permanent weight loss coach from hpwl.co. This is Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss, and I know you can make this happen. On this podcast, you will hear how to stop the mental madness, love your body, trust your food decisions, so you can create a life of happiness, freedom, and inner peace. Hello, hello, Leslie M. Thornton, Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss. Today we're talking about the history of hypnosis. (laughs) I used to talk about this in our free monthly event that we have. If you have not attended that or seen it, you should definitely get to it. Um, If you text the word hypnosis to one eight five five be alive, you will get access to that free training, uh, which does have the segment still. But I am taking it out now and just turning it into a podcast episode on the history of hypnosis because it's quite fascinating. So, without further ado, I'm going to share my screen for those of you who are not part of our hypnosis for permanent weight loss Facebook group. You may want to be if you're listening to this on podcasts. You just go on Facebook and search hypnosis for permanent weight loss community. Um, because then you get to see me in video. Isn't that fun? Actually in the emails, you see me in video now too, isn't it? Okay. Either way, if you don't have the video, I'm sharing my screen right now on the history of hypnosis. So first thing I want to say is that hypnosis has been around for a very, very, very long time. I'm actually going to start with this slide. So like all the way back in like India and Egypt, like pyramid days and all those things, hypnosis was happening. Okay. In Europe, they even had something they called the Royal touch where they actually believed that if you were sick or not doing well, that if you went and you touched the Royal family or you did the Royal touch, right, then you would actually be cured of your disease. So again, a belief system that actually created change in the body type of hypnosis. 1500, there's a guy named Paracelsus. He did healing with magnets then there was hands-on work and then more magnets. On the right-hand side in a blue box, you will see something that I find mesmerizing <laughs> about this work. Uh, in 1750, there was a guy, last name of Mesmer, you may have heard of mesmerism. That was what he did. And back in those days, they were still using bloodletting as a way to help people with their ailments, diseases they were dealing with. And in order to stop the bleeding, Mesmer would use magnets. And he was in practice for a very, very, very long time. People would travel near and far in Europe to actually get to this guy because he just did profound work and all this kind of stuff. Well, then later on, they started doing research on this Mesmer guy. And Benjamin Franklin being one of three, he was the, I think, only representation for the United States. The other were different places, countries in the world, actually called him a fraud because he said that the magnets were actually not doing anything. Well, there was actually one day where Mesmer, he did not have his magnet. The bloodletting was happening. He needed to stop the bleeding and he did not have a magnet. So he grabbed the first thing in a panic that he could find, which was a stick. And he started waving this stick and saying the same things that he would say about having that bleeding stop. And guess what? The bleeding still stopped the same way that it did with the magnet, which showed us that it wasn't actually the magnet that was stopping the bleeding, but in fact, it was just his saying it and setting the intention so the body could actually respond to the stoppage of bleeding. So Benjamin Franklin, when he called him a fraud, was not incorrect. He was not wrong that the magnets weren't working. But in fact, what he was doing actually was working. And what he was doing was actually hypnosis. They just did not know what that was yet. 
So from 1795 to 1985, that's a long span of years, like 200 years. The notion of energy had been left out of Western medicine and Western psychology. Crazy. So, and even to make it even crazier and makes so much sense to my biological mind is that in 1850, they started using the Esdale mesmerism in India for pain control. And they were starting to do studies that like, wow, this mesmerism, aka hypnosis, is actually doing wonders for people when it comes to pain control. But then during that time, chloroform was invented. Now, if you don't know what chloroform is, it's basically what you're given from surgical procedures that just takes the pain away instantaneously through chemicals and drugs. So why would they study something that they actually have to work hard for if there's a drug that can take care of it? Okay, then there was a, an attempt from Charcot to, a, to revive mesmerism. Fro Freud kind of came in. He wasn't using hypnosis, but started using these similar modalities with the mind. Pavlov, we should know, you ring a bell and then the dog salivates with the reflexes started happening. And then at Yale University, they started... Um, doing some research on hypnosis and suggestibility. It was the first standard psychological study um, done at Yale University. Then from the 18 from 1890 until the 1980s, there were these three guys, Hull, Erickson, four guys, Esther Brooks and Elman. Ex Erickson practiced for 60 years. They've written many, many books if you're ever really wanting to know. It's heady stuff. Um, but using hypnosis and the power of the mind and having extremely successful practices using this. And then later came about the um, neuro-linguistic programming, which I train in, as well as timeline therapy to support people with this. So I just think it's really good for people to have an understanding. I was just speaking to somebody about this recently, about the fact that hypnosis is science, that the way that the mind works is scientific. And what is so fascinating to me as someone like I grew up Roman Catholic, right? Still Christian now, but in the middle time when I was kind of questioning faith and religion, it was like, well, I know all of these good feelings that that stuff gave me growing up, but now I learned the science and how could there be a God in the sky? And I also know that hypnosis changed my life because it made me not obsessed with something overnight that I prior was very obsessed with and changed my life forever. And just like the power of the mind to get rid of pain when I actually focus on things in a different way or like give it a color or give it a shape, right? All these neuro-linguistic programming things. And so this is actually the science behind how God works, <laughs> right? Like what Jesus from a historical standpoint was trying to share with everyone around the fact that we are all God. We are all creators of our own reality. He was always saying, I'm not special. You can do the same. Right. And this hypnosis and neuro-linguistic programming is actually teaching you how you can do that. Right. So it's like instead of doing the grind and constant uphill battle of trying to stay consistent on your food plan and trying to exercise every day and then falling off and then eating a whole bunch of stuff and getting mad at yourself and then trying to strong man yourself back up again, which you've done many, many times before. But then what happens when you can't get yourself back up again anymore? what do you do then? And that's where I got to. And that's where all my clients get to is like, well, I don't want to be 600 pounds. And I also know that I just don't have it in me at all to follow any kind of plan. And my sugar or my portions are way out of control. I can't control myself. I'm an addict, right? Like all this stuff. So what do we do? It's like, ding, ding, ding. This is showing us that there are things blocking you in your unconscious mind. And you cannot see what's in your unconscious mind. You don't know what you don't know. You can't see it. This is why we hire coaches so they can see the things or they've been through the thing that we're trying to get through. And so they can be like, pause. What you just said right now is actually an indicator that X, Y, Z is happening in the background. And you're like, oh God, I've been doing that my whole life. Okay, well, now that we shined a light on it, you can do something about it. 
right? Hypnosis quiets down the part of your brain that's always trying to fix and control and start the diet again and be perfect every day and start again tomorrow. Quiets down that energizer bunny that can't ever seem to shut up unless you're drinking alcohol or eating food, which is why we need a break and why we stay stuck in this hamster wheel forever and actually begin to insert some of those more positive messages. The unconscious mind cannot receive any negatives. So if you tell yourself, don't eat those cookies, all that you're doing all the time is eating the cookies. It becomes harder to not eat them once you say don't eat them because your unconscious mind can't hear don't. So it's like you need to become this, you get to become this amazing wizard of your own mind and create what is going in and what's going out and what, like how your brain is functioning. And then it changes your relationships. It changes your relationship to food. It changes the way that you see yourself when you look at yourself in the mirror every day. It changes your relationship with significant others. Your sex life gets better everything gets better in your life. And it all starts with you actually learning how to access the unconscious mind, feel safe to feel your feelings, not be scared of your triggers and just have your triggers immediately snap you into the next diet or the next thing that you're going to do. That's only going to last for a little while and then stop again. Um, so yeah, that's how it all works and it's super powerful. And, um, I, yeah, if you've never done it before, maybe you've done some stuff like this in the past. I mean, that's what our healthy hypnosis star is. You'll get a um, little demo of the hypnosis. I literally just got off the phone with someone who did the hypnosis. She, or she watched the healthy hypnosis hour with the hypnosis three times. And she was like, I have driven by all the fast food restaurants and I have not had anything or needed to stop at all. I, uh, my packed my son, all these chocolate chip cookies, and I didn't even want any of his chocolate chip cookies when I packed it. And she's like, that is a never for me. That never happens. Um, and she was just high on life, you know? So that is a great way to just like, see that what I'm talking about actually, you know, cause it's great to hear these concepts. All my clients are very smart people like, okay. And you can ask all these questions and get it or not get it. But the experience of it, um, is what will have you become someone who could be as excited about this work as I am, if you choose to be, because it's just like, how could something I've struggled with my entire life literally be gone in one night? Like, that's crazy. So try the hypnosis. Um, and if you've already done the healthy hypnosis hour, um, training and you've watched that and you're still having struggles or you want to take it to the next level, um, then find a way to reach us, uh, one be alive, texting the word hypnosis, uh, our website, hpwl.co, um, plenty of ways to get in touch with us. We're here to support you and, uh, holidays are coming up everybody. And let's be serious, it's stressful around the holiday season. And it's stressful times in general right now on the planet. And like, what if you could be the only one on the planet not stressed out about food, body, and weight, or at least of whatever large percentage is, and have this holiday season be different? Like I literally said to people, our last healthy hypnosis hour, like, you literally could not be obsessed or be ever concerned about being on a diet again by the time Christmas comes around right? By the time this podcast airs, it's like maybe definitely by New Year's. So you just got to look at your life because the impact is great. Your relationships are affected. Your moods are affected. Whenever you feel bad about yourself, it makes you in a bad mood and it affects the people around you. And it's just, if you don't need to live that way, then why would you, you know what I mean? So love you guys so much. See you next time. If you are serious about taking action on your struggle with food, body, and weight, then this is for you. Go ahead and text the word hypnosis to 855-BE-ALIVE. That's 855-232-5483. Immediately after texting that number, you will get access to our free training that will tell you why you can't figure the food, body, and weight thing out, why you can't keep weight off even after you've been successful in the past, and how to actually overcome it, including a mini hypnosis session at the end. Don't miss out. Text the word hypnosis to 855-BE-ALIVE. That's 855-232-5483.